Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, and in His presence is fullness of joy. Amen? Oh, as we submit to the Word of God, things begin to happen. That's why the Bible says submit to God and resist the devil, because if you can't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. Amen? But in this story up, it's vitally important that we understand this, especially in these last days where you need to stir your faith up, you need to stir yourself up. Don't wait for somebody else to stir you up. Stir yourself up. One of the ways you can stir yourself up is praise and worship. Some of y'all need to do some jumping jacks before you do anything. Maybe a few push-ups, whatever. Get a little movement going. You know, do a little Holy Ghost shuffle, something. Stir yourself up. But don't let the enemy bring you into oppression. Amen? It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It's where you are now. Living the moment now, amen? If you're living the moment now and you stir yourself, you're stirring yourself up to connect from the future to the present. Most people spend more time on their selves and how they feel, what they've done, what they haven't done. Self, self, self. And Jesus said we're to deny ourselves. Some people have never really reached that. There's a level of denying yourself. That's in everything, not what you feel like. Amen? We must deny ourselves in everything. Why? Because you can't fight if you don't deny yourself. In fact, you'll be the cause of problems if you don't deny yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. Would you turn to the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7? But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to see baptism, to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? These were the religious sect, you know. They were supposed to be carrying the truth of God. They were Pharisees and Sadducees. They were more concerned about their places and seats and positions and what they wore and what people thought about them, than what God thought about them. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Man, he was telling them, you guys need to repent. And do not think it to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. What do you mean by the trees? The traditions of men to the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the, all the things that have been laid before there. Trees represent spirits of man. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But Jesus, he who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. His winding fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff which unquestionable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John as at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him from saying, and saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Now, Jesus came to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. You can't be on fire without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can have a fake zealousness. That's where people go, oh, no, and then they boom, go down. They're up on the roller coasters because they're emotional. They don't stay. See, now something about the fire of God. When we are baptized with the fire of God, God is saying here, look at we need to be flames of fire. 
especially in this moment right now. And it's so easy to quench the spirit by the things that you agree with, things that you speak, things that you react to, things that you're not willing to submit to. Amen? You can quench the spirit. In other words, if you quench the spirit, you quench the fire. It's the fire that burns everything. There's a fire that's in you that's burning if you allow it to burn. That's why we need to have new wine and new oil all the time. That's why it's important to worship all the time. Amen? That's why it's important to praise. That's why it's important to fellowship. And Acts chapter 1, verse 1. For the former account I made, O Theophilus, o Theophilus of all that Jesus began to both do and to teach. Now, I want you to know that the book was written by Luke, Acts. Luke was a doctor. And Theophilus was a friend of his who was an attorney. And he wanted to tell him what was going on and all the things that he saw that God did. And he said to him in verse 2, until the day in which Jesus was taken up, and after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during what? Forty days. So after Jesus rose from the dead, he was cruising around 40 days, everybody. And then when he went up to heaven 10 days later, he fulfilled the feast of Pentecost. That's when he poured out his spirit. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he asked them. No, he what? He commanded them. He did what? He commanded them. We talked a little bit about this the other day. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In other words, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. He commanded his people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? But Jesus wasn't talking about restoring the kingdom of Israel. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power, authority, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Again, so this, this flames, we're, we're to be flames of fire as witnesses with power and authority. And that's again with the anointing of God, which is the eternal presence, power, and truth. But it starts off by repentance, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Does everybody get it? We're to be a flame of fire. And we're to keep that flame burning. That's our responsibility. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, that's the Feast of Pentecost, had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Woohoo! And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. A rushing mighty wind with the tongues of fire went upon each and every one. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit and they got baptized with the tongue of uh, fire and tongues of utterance. Does everybody understand that? Jesus commanded this, didn't he? Amen. Never lose sight of that. That's why many people aren't free. They become religious. They get, because they know the word, they can do whatever. No relationship in the spirit. None. They just go about their business saying, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Jesus said, you're wretched. Disobedient and rebellious. You're bound by witchcraft and sorcery and don't even know it. 
Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 40. You think if more people were, were flames of fire, they'd be burning out against the enemy? And the, let me tell you, faith quenches the fiery dart. You know what burns it? The anointing. Does everybody get that? The anointing burns it. Why? Because if you're a flame of fire, ain't nothing going to touch you. The only thing that you're gonna, that's going to touch you is the fire of God. And that's where you blend to become one. Fire and fire. Exodus 40, please. Is everybody there? In verse 34. It says, then the cloud covered the tabernacle. Now, this is with Moses. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So there was a process of going into the glory of God, but man couldn't go in at that time, only if God allowed him. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, then the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. So the cloud led them by day. But if the cloud was not taken up, taken up then they would, they would not journey till the day that it was taken up. So that was their sign. They knew God was. So when the cloud went up, they knew it was time to move. They packed up. God waited for them. The cloud would move. They would follow the cloud. Amen? When the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle day by day, for the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle day by day, and the fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So at night, the fire of God was over the tabernacle. Well, what's the tabernacle now? We are. Does everybody understand? So Jesus, because what Jesus, remember, the cloud of glory, the presence of God was where? In the tabernacle. The cloud would come up. They would follow the presence of God. And then they would reset the tabernacle up and, and, and put the tent all around it. Amen? Now, when the fire, would God, when God showed up the fire, if the fire moved at night, they would move at night. But the fire is a representation because the Bible says God is fire. He's a consuming fire. Now, so you've got something very powerful here because we are now the tabernacle of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, and we're to be a flame of fire. That same fire, that same flame of divided tongues of fire that came upon the apostles and, uh, uh, and all those others that were believers is the same one that came upon us. So in this, it's our responsibility to stay stirred up and stay on fire. Not God's responsibility. It's our responsibility. Is everybody okay? The cloud by day, fire by night, tabernacles, we are now the temple. Now one of the things that the fire does is bring spiritual sight into the darkness. Does everybody get that? It brings what? Spiritual sight into darkness. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, you see into the darkness. I'm talking about the powers of darkness. You spiritually see now differently than you used to. Go to Matthew 17, verse 1. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Now, prophetically, this means after uh, 6,000 years, an event's going to happen. And we'll talk about that. And Jesus was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, 
and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now, there's something about Moses and Elijah. They both have associations with the fire. Amen? Now, think about this. Moses, the first time God appeared to him, was in a bush of fire that didn't burn. Couldn't understand why it wasn't burning, but it was flaming up. And God spoke to him. And then Moses saw the tabernacle with the fire over it and let, was led by him. And then when they were getting ready to cross over to the Red Sea, the fire of God protected them from being destroyed from Pharaoh. But Moses and Elijah, then Elijah called fire, destructive fire down on the altars of Baal. And he slow, and he killed 400 of the prophets of Baal and more. And so in, both of them have to do with associations with the fire of God. So here's something that happens. So Jesus appears. He takes up a few of the disciples. He took in verse 4, then, and, he, and then, uh, so behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now, there's something more prophetically insight in this. Number one, they had their association with the fire of God. Number two, they were prophetic in the area of what God was going to do in the future. The Bible says after six days, well, the Bible also says one day with the Lord equals 1,000 years. So it's saying after 6,000 years, there's going to be an event that's going to happen. We call it the rapture. Amen. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now he talked about three tabernacles that are present so that each one of them carried the flame of fire. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, just like the tabernacle. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were freaked out, greatly afraid. <laughs> but Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. <laughs> Again, Moses and Elijah, they had associations with the fire of God. Now, Elijah again called down the fire. Uh, and the prophets of Baal, and, and Moses had association with the fire of God. Now, there's something else associated with this prophetically. Moses, when he died, amen, God buried him. And an angel of the Lord came and got Moses and brought him home. Now, Elijah was taken up alive, amen, amen. So, Jesus was transfigured in front of them. But it said after six days, or what we call 6,000 years, this event's going to happen. Now, Moses represents those who have died, again, all right, and are buried, or wherever. Even if they're cremated, they're here somewhere, amen. Or their bodies are. They're, they're in heaven, those are alive. Amen? They call it asleep. So it's a representation of those who have died in Christ, Moses, and Elijah's representation of those who are still alive. An event that is going to happen to fulfill the Feast of Trumpets. Is everybody with me? And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, there's also another event that's going to happen. And Moses and Elijah will be associated with the two witnesses that will come to the earth. And it's also associated with when, in Book of Revelation, it mentions that the woman will be taken and given wings of an eagle. That's a wing on each side, which is Moses and Elijah also, to escape. So go to the Book of Revelation 12. You want to be a flame of fire, you got to pay the price. You got to pray the price. You got to deny yourself. You got to worship. 
Amen? You got to be connected. You got to stir yourself up. You can't be a flame of fire not stirring yourself up. You know, you remember um, the old way to start a fire? Would they take two sticks or something? You know, they, they get that spark going. You know, it always reminds me of, I used to have this Harley. It was a sports car, and it had no electric start. And you just have to kick this thing over, man. Sometimes it'd throw me over the handlebars. And I'd have to get it r just right and get it right in position. And the problem was is the kick thing would slip every once in a while. I'd slam my shin. So I want to make sure I get it right. But, man, after doing it a couple of times, you know, you get stirred up. Man. Now you're like, darn. This thing don't start. I'm going to burn it up. <laughs> and it would start. And then it would say, come out, come out, come out. It wouldn't say me, 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 like the rice burners they have these days. Amen. Or those little mopeds, you know, where they say but, uh, but, 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 you know. It's the only vehicle I know that says come out, come out, come out. But anyways, hallelujah. So anyways, Revelation 12, 13, let's go there. Is everybody there? Now, when a dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Well, we know if he's not only talking about Israel, but he's talking about the body of Christ. Amen? So he's going to attack Israel, which he's always doing it, no matter what. But the woman was given two wings as a great, uh, of a great eagle, a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nursed for a time and times and a half time, which is three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent, which is during the great tribulation. Well, there'll be tri tribulation, but then there'll be great tribulation. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after to the woman, and that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood or not be carried away by the eagle. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the up the flood, with, with which, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Why? Because he couldn't get a hold of her. She now is known as the bride of Christ. See, there's, many, the, the, there's the body of Christ, but then there's the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ will be removed. Not everyone in a body is going to be removed. Okay. So it says that the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Again, this is a, now the ones that were left of the body. Amen. He was going to go after them. Does everybody understand that? Again, there's a difference between the bride and the body of Christ. There's the whole body of Christ, but then there are those who proclaim to be Christians but are not walking with God. They're still living their own lives, doing their own thing, whatever. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I know Jesus. Yeah, this, that, whatever. Read the Bible. I read my Bible every day. I pay my tithes. I go to church. You know, I still fornicate. I still do this. I still do that. I still practice lawlessness. I still touch and agree with things that are ungodly. I still do this. I still do that. Well, let me tell you something. You're not the bride. Amen? And those are the ones who will be left behind. But they will still have the testimony of Jesus Christ if they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And some of them will be Jews because they have the commandments of the law. But this is where many people are going to be saved. The rapture is going to be the last sign of salvation. And many people are going to turn many people. Then there's something else going to happen. Now, I'm going to show you this here. I go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Now, the, the, the feasts of the Lord recycle every year. Amen. And only Jesus fulfills the feasts. But the feasts, m many of them, have, there's, there's only four of them that have been fulfilled. We still have three more that need to be fulfilled. Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Atonement, 
and Feast of Tabernacles. Those three must be fulfilled. And only Jesus can fulfill them. He's already came and fulfilled the first four feasts. The last feast that was fulfilled was Pentecost, and that's when he poured out his spirit with fire. In verse 13, let's speak it. But I do not want you to be what? Ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. That's fallen asleep, passed away in Jesus. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Where is he going to bring them from? Heaven. Amen. He's going to come. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. In other words, we ain't going until they go first. So that means that, I don't know if this is going to happen real quick or not, you know, but man, if we begin to see, why we're, if we begin to see graves being opened up and stuff, and we know we're next. <laughs> All right. Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, angel, and with the trumpet of God to fulfill the feast of trumpets. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So look at this because the Lord is not going to come to the earth. They will see him in the sky. He's not coming. He will not touch the earth. He will be in the sky. And those who see him, it talks about those who see him that pierced him will mourn. Many people, that's going to be a great sign, don't you think? Can you imagine Jesus in the sky? The, world whole, the whole world's going to see it. The graves are going to be opened up. Those who are dead in Christ are, they're getting their bodies. That's what they're getting. They're going to come with Jesus. And they're going to get their bodies, a new glorified body. Hallelujah. You can eat anything you want. Anyways. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and a dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, that means raptured, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now, hallelujah. Again, the rapture is a the bride of Christ, those who are dead are represent, that came alive was a representation of Moses. Amen? Symbolic of Moses appearing with Jesus where? And a transfiguration. We will get glorified bodies. Why do we need a glorified body? Because we will be going to and fro. We will have a glorified body because Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem will not be on the earth yet. There is another place where all the believers are. We call it heaven, but it's actually Jerusalem. And so when a person passes, they go there. When children are aborted, they go there. Anyone that dies before a certain age of whatever goes there. Amen? Responsibility, I guess you might say. So in this, when you and I, when the Lord comes to get us, he's going to bring us to the new Jerusalem. And he's going to allow the, his wrath, because he's going to use the powers of darkness. He's going to allow Satan to rule. Remember what happened to Job? He allowed, God allowed Satan to do whatever. Amen. Well, he's going to do the same thing on the earth. And it's going to be a three and a half years of hell on earth. Many people will get saved. If you are left behind, don't take the mark. You'd rather die and have your head cut off or whatever then say you deny Christ. Amen? Okay. And then those who are alive, the same thing as Elijah being taken up alive, will be taken up with them. But again, we will meet the Lord where? In the air. He's not coming in, you know, in a bus or anything like that. Revelation 11, verse 1. It says, then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it. 
for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. Uh-oh. And they will prophesy 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. That's six, three and a half years. Does everybody get it? These are the two olive trees and two lampstands standing before the God of earth. The oil. Everybody said oil. What lights the lampstand? Oil, right? Olive trees make oil. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone one wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood. It sounds like Elijah and Moses to me. And to strike the earth with the pl all plagues as often as they desire. Can you imagine that? Well, they finish, when they finish their testimony or their assignment, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and overcome them and kill them. God will allow this. And their bodies will lie out in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and, and Egypt, where also our Lord Jesus was crucified. So we know this will be done in the Middle East. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, send gifts to one another because these two prophets have tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell on all those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemy saw them. In that same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the, all the of the city fell. And in the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe was passed, because behold, the third woe is what? Coming. Again, these two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, are known as the flames of fire. We are to be the witnesses now. We are the forerunners of Christ. We have the spirit of Elijah. And Malachi, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger. Are you a messenger? And he will prepare the way before me. The Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. So if you're in the fire, see, fire refines you. If you are one who's carrying the fire of God, you're constantly being refined. There's a new thirst and hunger. There's something you always, you always want more of God. You just can't help it. You want to know more. You want to see him. You want a visitation. In fact, you want to go home if you can. <laughs> but again, he's a refining fire. And like launderer soap, he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, which were the priests, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. In righteousness. In other words, he's turning things around. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, in the former years. And I will come near to you for judgment. I will be swi a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit w wage earners and widows and orphans. And again, those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. So he will refine these individuals and turn and hope that they get on fire. He will give them that opportunity. Refiners' fires to burn out corruption, 
corruptible seeds and purify the hearts of his people. But again, if you're in a state, I mean, we're always in that state of refining, but there's a place where the fire assists you. But for the world, it burns them. It exposes them. People are really offended and easily offensive because they're not carrying the fire of God. Because those things would be burned. Does everybody understand it? The fiery darts would be burned. When you're carrying the fire of God, you're not all overtaken by emotion. You're strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Because you're walking in that fire. And you're a sign and wonder to the world, no matter where you are. You don't sway. You don't compromise. In fact, people are going to, you're going to expose people without saying anything. Because light exposes darkness. That's if you're on fire. But if you're not on fire, you'll be refined. You will feel the burn. Amen? Heck, we went through a long period of burn. Everybody remember that? And we were hoping it was going to be a short period of time, but man, it lasted long. God was burning, burning us. He was refining. It took a while. But praise God. Now we're on fire. And, but the burn still continues for some because they haven't allowed the burn to work in them. They keep resisting the burn. Everybody says, Lord, send your fire. And then when it comes, they run. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 25. See then that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they do, did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as are the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Well, let me tell you, if you're in the fire, you won't be shaken. If you're a flame of fire, you won't be shaken. Therefore, since we, have, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. And if he's a consuming fire, we're to be a part of that fire. Amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah 66, in verse 14. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to his what? Servants. And his indignation to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with what? Fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Well, who's the flames of fire? We are. Amen. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves. To go to the gardens after an altar after an idol in the mist, eating swine's flesh and abomination and a mouse, shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Now, we know that that's demonic. Amen. For I know their works and their thoughts. I shall be, uh, it shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and, and those among them who escape I will send to the nations, to Tyrus, Paul, Lude, who draw the bow and Tabal and Jav Javan, to the coastlines afar off who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory, they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. In other words, he says, I'm going to rebuke them with the ministers of the flame of fire. That's us. But you got to be a flame of fire. Amen? And I'm going to close at Revelation 3. Zeal for the Lord. You know, Paul, who, who be, uh, was Saul, 
before he came, Paul, he had zeal for the Lord. Except for the zeal was nothing but works. He didn't have a relationship with the Lord until the Lord slammed him with baptizing him in the Holy Spirit and fire. Then he was zealous for God's presence. See, we're to be lovers of God's presence no matter what. And to the angel of the church of Lord the seasons right. Are we all there now? Good. I guess am I there now? <laughs> These things says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, and the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor, nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in what? Fire. That you may be rich in the white garments, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be, see, be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may what? See. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. That means don't go back and do it again over and over and over. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who is in, has an ear, let him what? Hear. A lot of people listen and don't hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, again, we are in a time of great transition. The world is never going to be the same. Things will never go back the way they were. Never. It's over with. And that's okay. Because Christ is going to rule. The body's going to rule. Righteousness will rule. How long? Who knows? But God is preparing for the final harvest. This is a process of the final harvest. This is what it's all about. That's why there's all kinds of stuff going. People can't turn unless they see proof. That's why God is exposing all the wickedness and evilness through the world. And many people will turn. Why? Because it's already begun. The harvest has already begun. And he wants to make everyone a flame of fire so it spreads. You know, a forest starts on fire and then it spreads quickly. That's what he's doing right now. So just get ready. Keep yourself stirred up. Keep your eyes on the Lord, your ears open to his word and his voice. And be ready to do whatever it takes. Amen. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your word. And we ask, Lord, that the seed that has been imparted would stir us up and connect us to the fire of God. We ask, Lord, today for a refreshing of the baptism of fire for each and every one, that we may be your flames of fire as witnesses and signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.